Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and if you are here for the first time, well then, welcome to our weekly painting progress, and for those of you that have been joining us for whatever duration of time, we got plenty more where those previous models came from. So we're going to start things off this week with a random War Games Atlantic Goblin with really bright skin. Why does he have really bright skin? I don't have a good answer for you, but he does. And he's very basic in his painting, but I think when he's put nice and far away from the more discerning eye, that should not be an issue. So I didn't get as much done as I did last week, and last week I got a veritable pile of figures finished. As I talk into a coffee cup there. And I, I feel like I got a fair amount done this week as well. A random fireforge peasant. In need of some grass to till. Still have a few of those banging around. Speaking of Wargames Atlantic, even though I just said Fireforge, I went ahead and got a couple more of my Aztecs finished up as, well, with the exception of their eyes, I guess, finished up as much as I am content to paint them. We're going to go back, we'll put some grass, we'll do a little bit of touch-up still. I find that happening more and more, is that I am doing these videos, and then like taking the stuff and, and touching it up most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. After seeing all the various imperfections that I know I can fix up. I was trying to do the actual like shield design. I can't remember, there's a special name for it that the Aztecs had. I think it came out okay. So I was doing it with a sloppy brush. I do kind of want to go back and do the outer edge of the shield in a different color, though. And he's got a buddy here. Ooh, I don't know what happened there, why it's kind of glossy, but not really. And I know I made a mess on the bottom feathers. And I know his banner pole looks like it's on fire, which I probably should change up. Maybe put some white. Maybe actually make the feathers look like feathers. That would probably help. Nevertheless, it is a fun little figure. They keep piling up too. I can have my paymasters, Aztec General, lead them into battle here. This is a cool model too. In fact, I just got a package the other day from Paymaster. So hopefully we will get those guys all put together and shown off soon enough. Slide those over. So, this guy is a Warforge style gunfighter from Dragon Trapper's Lodge that I did print a custom base for and subsequently lost it. I don't know what I did with it. And I'm not sure why it looks like he's got a laser pistol when he has, like, physical ammo in casings on his chest there. Did I paint both eyes? I think so. Just the shadow of the hat really hides it. You can see here he's got some nasty printing issues. This is around the time before I change the sheet at the bottom of the resin vat. But I figured, I don't even think I noticed it at the time. But I figured, good enough. We'll give him a second lease on life. That's what's funny, is every now and then I'll have a model that, you know, it's like 95, 97, 98% okay. I'm just going to roll with it. Excuse the coffee cup. And that's what we did with this guy. And I don't think I finished his eyes now. This is another Kyoshu Neko model. Again, they're about the only ones that are really putting out any kind of samurai, Sengoku era, Japanese feudal stuff on a regular basis. Funny thing is, his leg did not print completely. And you can't tell that because I kind of built up a pile of sand all around his knee. His knee actually is completely flat. It just completely leveled, but I think it worked out alright. The actual model is not like that. And I kind of was thinking along the lines of like Galford and Hanzo from uh, the old Samurai Showdown games. Maybe a little bit of Hotsuma with the, the long scarf in red. I do need to touch that up. There's a little black splotch there. Along with actually painting his eyes better. Fun little model. That's the thing. I, I really enjoyed Koshineko's stuff. That's why I painted this guy. Yet another samurai of theirs. This is actually a remix of a different model. That 
was done by one of the community members. The original model is the Sohei Warrior Monk Champion here. You can see there are some similarities and some differences. And both have some splotchy gloss spots that I missed. That adds to the charm. And I swear I painted one like this last week, or maybe the week before, but the only one I can find is this dude. And this isn't the one I was thinking of. Did I paint another one that I'm not even aware of? I, I don't know. I swear it was based on him. Maybe it's just my imagination, because I know a few weeks ago I did like the two twin blade guys. I don't even, I think this is the original and this is a remix. So I, I don't know. I didn't paint a bunch of them. Alright, what else we got? Because I've been in a samurai mood. We have another Zenit model. I think I posted these guys. I think I'm down to like one left. Like there was the warrior monk with the two hammers. I'm trying to figure out what color I want to do his pants in. I like the Oni mask on his belt, which I probably should have put a little bit more detail into, but oh well. He does have a face. It is super difficult to see. And I did try to paint it, but with the shadows on that hat, it's never really going to come across. We have quite the eclectic collection of uh, samurai models. So here's something different. And I think I just talked about this literally like the other day. Uh, these are some of the Adamant Arsenal Vile Knights. And just like their regular modular guys that were part of that Valiant in the Vile Kickstarter, uh, tons and tons of options for you to goof around with. And I put a couple of little basing bits from their current campaign, which is already funded if you are interested. They have all kinds of, like, not base toppers, but uh, like little scatter terrain bits to add, like this bone totem here and little rocks here and there. And his friends have also very similar stuff. Some random crystals, some broken armor, barnacles and pustules with teeth, cracked helmets. I mean, honestly, if you wanted to enlarge these guys a little bit, I mean, they'd make perfect Blight Kings. I have these on 32 millimeters, but I mean, if you want, yeah. Probably if you left them alone as is, they'd look okay on a 40. I'd blow them up a little bit, but that's just me. Yet another bizarre, <laughs> adamant arsenal concoction that we've come up with here. I'm gonna get all that stuff off. Can just random little basing bits from their current campaign. I didn't realize at first he actually still has a head there, despite the fact that it looks like a lamprey. And I used two different colors, and they both kind of came out the same on both the head and the flesh-like blade he's got here. I wanted that more red. I'm probably going to go goof around with that a bit more. Okay. And here's another one I think I just talked about recently. Uh, Parker Barrows, Dead Man Walking. I tried painting his eyes, but it doesn't matter. You can't see them just due to the dark colors of his scarf there, of the hat over his head. It didn't make a huge difference. And I didn't do the greatest paint job, but I think from a distance, it's going to look just fine. Especially when it's in focus there. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, if you haven't really checked out the Malifaux stuff, there are all kinds of fun options, especially if you like the Weird West steampunk look. All these guys are various Malifaux figures. I, our Parker Barrows, both Parker Barrows, this is the original, and this is the Dead Man Walking version. I, I think they fit great with just about any kind of Western game. I mean, then they, my personal preference is Shadows of Brimstone stuff. I think they work great right there. So if you haven't had a chance to check out any of the Malifaux, whatever edition, even if you have no intention of actually playing the game, I want to play the game. <laughs> Nobody else does. Uh, they make really good characters for that. So I guess that's not a bad little haul, but there is one more thing I got finished this week. I didn't do the best job, but I did give it that old college try, if that's a thing. Uh, this is the Void Lord Tungaroa from... 
Atlin Forge. And after somebody mentioned it to me, I can't help but feel that his base should have been in the water and that should have been a surfboard or a shark. A shark in the water would have been just as cool as a surfboard. But he was a model much like the ninja I was mentioning, you know, with his messed up print failure leg that you can't really tell now. His hand totally came out all misprinted. His thumb kind of just blended into the rest of it, but, I, you know, unless you're really looking for it and really looking for it at the right angle, it's not really noticeable. I tried playing around with one of those uh, makeup brushes to get all of those details on that stinking tape of his. And I did try to clean it up a little bit, but man, was that a hassle. I think the result in the end is worth it. You can see a little bit of his lower one right there. You can't really see his back one if you attach those shoulder cloaks. But I think it's just a really cool figure. And he's huge. I mean, he was huge without the base. He's huge without the tactical rock. But I went for the whole shebang. And I know I've shown them before. I don't think I have any of the white toa. So here's one of his regular buddies. I tried using a different color for him. I wanted something more shark-like. To me, these were just kind of like blah. They were done with contrasts. Wasn't really a fan. On the other hand, I'm thinking I'm probably going to go back and actually do some touch-up and do some highlighting with a lighter gray. Because why not, right? I love that shark fin, though. Overall, very cool model. I actually started painting some of the other Atlet Forge boss dudes I've had. I've had like that Manus Mortis. Uh, can't think of the guy's name. I can't even think of the 40k equivalent's name. One of the 40k Death Guard heroes. They made one, but they gave him like all these crazy spider limbs, which I thought was really cool. So he started, but he's still nowhere as big as a tonga roll here. So overall I'm pretty pleased with myself and what was funny was I forget who and I apologize for that uh, but one of you subscribers mentioned you know I'm always doing all these weekly painting progress videos you know and people were asking well, can we see this stuff more easily so they're like why don't you just hashtag it as weekly painting progress. I thought duh why didn't I think of that that's a genius idea. So I will. I will start trying to post this stuff throughout the week with our own hashtag weekly painting progress. But the cool thing is I want you guys to do that too. I'm curious to see what you've been painting. I keep chugging away and I know some of you I get to read it in the comments but I would love to actually see it. So if you're on Instagram tag me whenever you guys post anything. Put that weekly painting progress hashtag in there and I I would love to see it. In case you guys are after any of these models yourselves, as always, we'll have those links down below so you can track those down and hopefully do a better job than me. And now you can brag and boast about it while you're at it, right? Right. So, with that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.